to that moment when everything finally... One minute! Whichever path you choose, it starts here. Max Gear is a high-performance synthetic gear oil designed to provide maximum protection to heavily loaded gear. Its slippery synthetic molecules and centerlick additive package not only reduce wear, they virtually eliminate both gear and bearing wear. We run a thousand horsepower through our transmission and differential all season long and never have a problem. Eliminate a variable. Drift with Royal Purple Max Gear. Poor purple, Royal Purple. You can find Max Gear at O'Reilly Auto Parts. モータースポーツで得た高度な技術を全てのレイズホイール一本に込める魂永遠の勝てないビヨンド・ザ・レボリューションザ・コンセプト・イズ・レーシング NGK and NTK is more than just high ignitability spark plugs and precision sensors. They're about growing the car community. This is why they're introducing Shop Squad, an automotive meeting place for shop owners, service writers, technicians, students, and industry professionals to come together and share knowledge and encourage self growth. Enrolling is free, and you have access to on demand training, digital newsletters, product launch information, and more. Woo! Hello, Long Beach. We are here. It's 2024 already. We're doing something a little different. Here for practice. We're hanging out. It's uh, myself, Jacob Gens. I got uh, El Presidente, Ryan Sage with me. You guys asked for it. You, you wanted practice. You wanted some more. You wanted to see what was going on. We've had so many incredible moments in practice that I feel like we miss out on. If you're not here, if you're not physically in the building, you do miss out on some of the fun that happens in practice. But now for everybody at home, get to hang out a little bit. Yeah, new format, trying new things. I lied to you. I said I was retiring, getting out of the booth, and then I just came up and sat next to you. But no, we thought it was appropriate to uh, kind of sit down, do an hour-long broadcast leading, in, uh, leading into, into uh, our new seating format and uh, talk about what we're going to see here today. Obviously, right now we are in the midst of practice. There's another hour uh, that is going to be taking place in front of us. But, you know, we want, really want to get down to the nitty-gritty and talk about the differences between the past 20 years and what we're trying to do moving forward here in the 21st season. 
Yeah, it's, I, I've said this in the podcast a couple of times. I feel like this is the most amount of changes that I remember. I mean, obviously, my knowledge of FD is, is, is very strong in the last 10 years. So I don't, you know, this is, I don't remember anything quite like this. Um, obviously, the biggest change is going to be the new seating format. So traditional qualifying, out the window, hello, seating 60. Yeah, I mean, the biggest, I think, thing to take away is that there is no longer any single car qualifying. Every single part of competition is a tandem battle. And how drivers do at this round will dictate whether or not they are in what is called the seeding 16, which is what we're gonna see today, or one of their, if they're the top 24 drivers and they make it into the main event top 32. So what we have here in the seeding 16 is essentially that, 16 drivers who are vying for the last eight spots available in the bracket. So what you need to follow if you're just looking to find out who's gonna be into tomorrow's competition is whoever wins their first battle in the top 16 moves on. Yeah. The rest of the battles after that are still consequential because they play a role in what position you get in the top 32, whether it's 25, 26, 27, and so on. But the very first battles are the important ones. You're either going home or you're moving on as we take a look at the bracket. Yeah, so very, you know, as you, as you said, this is it. You have to win this battle. So instead of, you know, getting two runs and qualifying and making sure you're not zeroing out, in this case, you, you've just, you've got to win your battle. So this is what it, our first set is going to look like. So as Ryan said, you win this, you move on, you're going to be in the show. What it comes down to, though, and what gets really exciting is, depending on how you did in this seeding bracket is, is what your battle is going to be going into tomorrow. Right. So if you win this, you're up against Dylan Hughes, and then it just gets harder and harder and harder after that. So you just have to win one to make it in the show, but then you can start to play some games and understand like who you might battle and how things might go. And yeah, there's a, there's a, I, I do think there's, we're gonna see some strategy. And, and what we do see in that bracket for fans that have maybe been following a, a little bit more loosely is, it's the drivers that are ranked from 25 to all the way down the line. And it's also all of our prospect drivers that have come up, including Ben Hobson, Derek Madison, et cetera, et cetera. And it's our brand new series, Connor Shanahan, who came in last minute and is going to be doing battle against Dmitry Brutsky. So it's not as if we are seeing battles that are not good. Yeah, These are gonna be incredible, especially, and I forgot to mention, uh, and we'll, we'll talk about them later, but the very young uh, Minowa coming over from FD Japan, we don't know a lot about him in these kind of conditions. We have seen him drift in Japan if you stay up till two or three o'clock in the morning. Incredible talent. He's gotta make his way through this bracket as well. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, there's a lot of variables and there's a lot of drivers that, you know, if you're, if you're just a, a casual fan to FD, you might not know, you may not know their history. So um, I will say, I mean, as we're watching this, you're, you're kind of, for everybody looking at home, this is practice. So this is where the drivers are really trying to hone things in. These are all of the drivers. This isn't just, you know, the drivers that are going into the seating 16. It's anybody that is competing that's in here. Now, there's been a couple of, with the, with the way that we've modified what qualifying is, I mean, scrapped it all together. What I've noticed is, Practice has become more intense than it ever has been. Yeah. Um, we've seen a lot of big wrecks already. We've seen some crazy tandems, and we're already seeing drivers that we saw in a, the run previous, like Diego Higa, like really, really getting better. And it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's been incredible to, to see the progression. And that's my favorite part of practice is seeing how things start, you know, the, the very hesitant runs here and there. And then by the end of practice, guys tapping walls, guys getting into each other. And a lot of the times they pick up damage that then affects what happens in our first set of battles. There's a lot of things on the surface that you pick up on. I think the, the most commonly asked questions that I've received about this new format is, A, why are you doing it? And what changes do you suspect that it will bring to the series overall? The main reason why we were doing this is that because we run a two championship entity, Prospect and Pro, 
everything that we do has to be thought of through that lens. And we, for a long time, for at least the past five years, have not been able to do two-run qualifying. And we'll never be able to do that because we have events where we run two championships. So we've had these different versions of qualifying over the years, none of which we were really happy and satisfied with. And we finally you know, had a discussion with the pro drivers last year and the idea was brought up is, could you have an all tandem competition? And that's how we started thinking about this in the off season. And one of the things to think about is, drivers come into the events, they have their qualifying setup. You know, they're burning through a set of tires on a single lap to practice what it feels like in qualifying. That's all gone. Yeah. All setups now are set up for tandem. And that, in my mind, is going to elevate and raise the bar for competition. The other part that's really interesting is that if you do this seating bracket once or twice throughout the year, and you make it, say, to the final four of the finals, you will have gotten the same amount of competitive time as a guy that charged from 16 to the finals in the top 32, Osbo, Denofa, et cetera, et cetera. What does that do? over time to right. raise the bar and elevate everybody's driving level to be that much better. Yeah, and, and uh, I've been reading a ton of comments and, and I've tried to spend at least a couple minutes with almost every driver on the grid this weekend. And I mean, there's still some mixed feelings about it. Uh, I do think, you know, a couple of the things that came up were, were just like the, you know, the, the increased cost. I'm going to run more. I'm down lower. But uh, my argument back to that is you're getting more seat time like you've never had before. So. Well, more seat time, more air time, which is where the value is derived from. Right. And the tire consumption is most likely going to go down over the course of the season. Because when you start extrapolating out the drivers that have to be in that seating bracket, once they make it into the top 32 or they're in the top 24, they no longer have to do that. So they are not going to be wedded to the seating bracket for the entirety of the season. Everything is results-based. And then after the event, we can tell you pretty much immediately what Road Atlanta's bracket is going to look like. And that allows us to have discussions and look at win percentages and how will this guy train on the sim compared to this guy and all these crazy things that are kind of a paradigm shift. For me, it's a better overall product for the fans. And that's one of the most important things. Yeah, and, it, and really what the seating bracket is going to do is, I mean, look at this top 32. Anywhere you see a blank space in there, that's where a driver could come in. Right. So you're, you're seeing, you know, the drivers like Adam who are only running a couple of rounds. And, you know, driving like that, right, this is practice. He's, he's hitting walls. I mean, he's a little off there on outside zone three. But, like, you're going to see guys like Adam come in, guys like Vaughn come in who are only running a couple of rounds mess up all of this but it also means there is a detriment to that that you're going to be in the seating 16 on the rounds that you're you're doing your one stop on right the so. consistency of running all eight events is beneficial particularly if you are finishing in the top 24 and uh, you know as we see here on the line the return of Federico Sharifo, you know, this is, I had a discussion with him yesterday for about five minutes in the, in the paddock. And, you know, we talked about the, the things to think about from a driver's perspective and how, you know, he's putting together his program and how he should attack the seating 16, what his strategy should be, how he puts together his practice program, right? You're mentioning how aggressive practice has been. It kind of makes sense because every single practice run where before you were doing or trying to do lead laps leading into qualifying or at least do a singular lap leading into qualifying, now you can actually find the guy that you're battling against yeah. and if he's willing, go and battle against him to practice in competition for hours down the road. When you can, you can look at notes. You can go back and watch how they drove before. You can, you can spend a bit more time in practice right now. Like we've got all the spotters to the right of us. They're taking notes. They want to they wanna understand what that driver's doing and you can see more of it. And they're doing a lot more of it. So out of these battles, I mean, one of them, to be honest, that I feel like I overlooked before, but watching practice now that's going to be really interesting, is Ryan Literal and Diego Higa. Both drivers who, I mean, admittedly had a rough season last year, both of these drivers were crushing practice. Higa absolutely, like, I mean, it took a little bit for him to get into it. Same thing with Literal, but both drivers, Literal's chase have been nuts in practice. Higa's leads have been nuts, so 
It'll be cool, but is there any other ones that you're looking at here going like, ah, oh, I can't wait for this? I mean, I, I think everything for me the first time around is I'm, I have anticipation about it, and I'm excited about it. Obviously, there's some newcomers coming in and some prospect guys coming up that I would like to see how they perform in, in this context. But we've got our seating 16 in front of us. We're about ready to get going. Just a little bit more practice. We'll bring in a few more interviewees to talk with you, Jacob. And then, man, we'll kick things off. 20 years of doing the same thing, now doing something different. Yeah, change it up. So we'll be back shortly. We'll keep, uh, keep you guys, uh, you know, involved here in practice and uh, get another guest coming in to sit down and kind of talk some shops. So be right back. Don't go anywhere. And we'll uh, come back to practice here in Long Beach. Really drift here. Now, if you haven't heard, we just recently dropped our 2024 competition rule book. And in those rule books is the biggest competition change in Formula Drift history. Today, we're gonna to talk about what that is, but to start and make it short and sweet and bottom line it for you, Formula Drift has eliminated all single run qualifying in both pro and prospect competition. And as of 2024, the 21st season, Formula Drift is a tandem only competition from the first lap to the podium. Now, let me repeat this. All single run qualifying is now in the history books and Formula Drift is now a tandem only competition. Now that we've broken the news, let's give you the details. Because Formula Drift does not have a set number of competitors at each event, and because we want the on-track action to be the same rough time as the previous qualifying, there are three different formats depending on the number of drivers. There's a format for 32 or less competitors, a format for 33 to 40 competitors, and a format for 41 to 48 competitors. In 2024, Prospect is set to use the 41 to 48 competitor format, and Pro is set to use the 33 to 40 competitor format. So let's talk about those. In Pro, coming into the season and at the end of each individual event, the drivers that finish the event in the top 24 will be automatically locked into the main event top 32 for that next round's competition. And this is event ranking, not season ranking, which is important. The remaining drivers will be seeded into a top 16 bracket by their finish and a random sort number between two and seven in order to get the proper diversity of competition battles round by round. Once the sort has happened, those remaining drivers will be pitted against each other in a top 16 bracket with eight drivers moving on to fill the eight remaining slots in the main event top 32. Formula Drift will run the entire top 16 bracket to allow each driver to battle it out for the highest position possible in that bracket. So what does this look like as a fan? Well, instead of a regular qualifying session, fans will see a high caliber top 16 as drivers battle their way into the main event top 32. The best form of drifting will be on display for fans to see and drivers will also bring down their overall tire consumption over the course of the season because no one has to do a qualifying setup one tire usage for their car. Okay, now what about Prospect? Well, Prospect will be exactly the same, except that instead of a full top 16, there will be 16 locked in drivers for the main event top 32, and the remaining drivers will do only one battle in a top 32 bracket, and they will have a random sort of two through 15. The winners will move on into the main event top 32 and also by the nature of this competition will end up using less tires over the course of the season. So what do we have here in all of this? We have a much better product for fans, a competition that is still merit based and with emphasis on the type of drifting that we all love. If you would like to see this fully explained in detail, head to the Formula Drift website and go to the bottom and download the rulebooks for yourself and check it out. Formula Drift has now done 20 years. And now we have entered the phase for the next 20 by creating a competition that will set the tone for generations to come. See you at the track. All right, we are back here at Long Beach, back here for practice. I got a very special guest that uh, I feel like his wallet is a little lighter after the last couple days. <laughs> What's going on, Vaughn? What's up, my man? Oh. Happy to be here, bro. Dude, that's, uh, <laughs> what a weekend so far. Um, man. Overtime. It has been insane. It, it's uh, we've never had. Well, you know, first of all, we've never had a fire in 20 years. Yeah. Uh, let alone uh, get that thing together, 
and uh, you know Ben's obviously learning. We got that thing in the wall pretty good today, so yeah. it's we're being tested. Definitely being tested. Th these are the moments of. Uh, do you really want this? Are you sure you want to be here? <laughs> Do you have the right group of people around you? And uh, all signs are pointing to yes right now. Yeah. So yeah. So James went out for uh, for last lap of media day, and all of a sudden, uh, smoke started coming out, flames, uh, gnarly flames. Right now, basically, what you're seeing is that the uh, flames got to the nitrous line. And okay. basically a complete bottle of nitrous emptying out into the engine bay. Um, so super unfortunate situation. I mean, obviously amazing thing that, that James and Passenger are unscathed. Um, that's a priority, but uh, Mustang was not so lucky. What did, what did it take to get it back together? Because I heard some rumors of people being flown in with bags with intake manifolds and wiring. and. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it was an unbelievable effort from not just the crew here, uh, myself, James, and the team back in Charlotte. So we had some people flying in uh, on Wednesday. So we changed their flight. They ran around with our shop foreman, getting parts, going to some of our suppliers. We had like five Pelican cases full of parts, intake manifolds. My car's apart, so we pulled all the wiring, all the hoses, just so we had everything because there's such a shortage right now of plumbing and wiring needs. Really? Yeah. And it's uh, these connectors that we use are, are very, very rare and highly sought after. And so uh, we just sent everything we thought we could maybe use while we were also overnighting parts, <laughs> chasing things down, calling in favors. Um, you know, it was uh, it is really unbelievable. You know, a brand new car, tested it twice, the car was flawless, yeah, and, then, and then and uh, then and then that and. Frankly, right now, we, we don't even have the exact uh, answer as to what happened. Okay. Uh, the forensics are so hard to do with, uh, with everything being that toasty. Um, the assumption is it's something uh, fuel related, but uh, we don't have the answer, unfortunately. Yeah. So um, I wish there was like an amazing thing to learn from it. Um, but in this moment, there's not. So we just uh, you know, do the best we can. I think I think it's one of those just okay, fix the problem. Let's do that. Let's get that off our plate, and then we'll go back and diag and like you know if we can figure it out, awesome. If not, just all right. Let's let's move on. Let's yeah. On, so. Yeah. Well, you know, it's it's one of those things. I mean, it's it's never never ever happened. So we know it's a freak situation. Yeah. Um, there's quite a you know bit of uh, plausibility and assumptions, but yeah. uh, you know don't want to blame anything and, yeah. and uh, share misinformation, so. Now, the, the primary thing is that the car's back together. James already having practice. Looks like a madman. He uh, amazing. Could, looks I, amazing. <laughs> like, dude, first, second run, banging bumpers off the walls the whole time. I'm like, okay, he hasn't, he hasn't missed a beat. This hasn't done anything but no. be positive. Uh, and then I feel he gets motivated with this type of stuff. Yeah. If you look at Irwindale last year, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, that would Crush freak it. a lot of drivers out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, physically, it'd be tough to drive the car. Yes. Like, he, just, he just went through it. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, he's up right now. So everybody watching at home is going to get to see what he's driving like. And it's a, it's a man possessed. It's it's nuts. So He's unreal. He is just a phenomenal, phenomenal driver. And uh, love seeing him in our in our yeah. RTRs. Oh, Oop. Robbins. A little, little too much on it. I, I can't imagine how hard it is to like just drive the car and huck it in there like we saw obviously ben had a a boop if you will from your perspective from driving this track for years like it's a blind corner you're literally just driving at a wall and hoping there's an opening on the other yeah side. it's it is really tough and that's what we've been working with ben on here is like you can't see it yeah. so trying to find the references along the way right you have your three two one i usually enter at the one cone okay um i get as much speed as i can because it's a very long narrow uh section before it opens up and so you can't really flick it up and out and create an arc right. you kind of have to enter handbrake a few times and so Finding the references along the way until you can see your opening is the is the key here, and uh, that's what we've been working on. But talk about intimidating, you know? Yeah. Like this is you, you go through pro spec, right? And then, but you've never been to Long Beach, yeah? Because Long Beach is only pro, so this is out of pro spec. This is your first gauntlet <laughs> into pro, and it's like the gnarliest track because it's not forgiving. There's no runoff, and it's it's got that blind entry, and um, it just you know it it just takes a little bit of time. 
Um, and so we're seeing it now. I'm watching. I'm seeing Ben starting to really get it. His last lead run was unbelievable. So, uh, you know, he's got some confidence. He got the, got the butterfly. He smacked the butterflies out of himself earlier. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's been a lot of fun, though, the process. And aside from the drama um, and, and watching our amazing team just pull through. I mean, they've literally been at it for 48 hours. Yeah. And um, so to watch it and then see them now still running our cars despite their tiredness, it's uh, inspiring. What's the uh, – sorry, it gets loud up here. It's crazy, huh? It's loud. Um, what, so with, with a two-car team, like, how – how do you manage that? Like, is there uh, is there any team orders? Is the focus right now like develop Ben, but then we're we're pushing James for a championship, or is it like, hey, both drivers, you know, one and two, however that sorts out. Like from the from the team owner side of it, like, how do you divide attention and funds or parts or, yeah, or staff? So support wise and infrastructure wise and spares and all of that, it's all equal. Always is set up everything. Like everyone gets a hundred percent. Right. The goals are set up for the year that James is here to win a championship. Okay. And that Ben is here to do the best that he can do every lap. Right. And as long as there's constant progression, um, that is a championship for Ben this year. Yeah. So um, I, I have uh, high expectations for Ben, but I'm also being realistic because there's so many things that need to fall in place in this right whether it's the driver the vehicle track conditions competitors you're running so um that that was shared with the team in our first test it's like look here's the deal and this is how it goes so in the heat of the moment if there was a scenario where it was like we were down to one spare because they used everything and it was down to james or ben needing it in a situation because ben because James is focused on the championship this year, yeah. that is the only time that there would be any kind of quote-unquote team orders or right. anything. Sorry, that's not really team orders, but yeah, any time we would uh, make a compromise to, to the detriment of any of our drivers, but that's to the bigger picture, right? Um, as far as team orders, never, never such a thing. Um, you know, there was multiple times where, you know, me specifically, I could have lot for Chelsea over the years yeah. and uh, that's just not it's not what this sport is built on and it's not how we're built so uh, everyone's got to earn everything and um, you know that would be a very hollow way to win or yeah. shallow way nobody, right? nobody so, wants to win that way no so. yeah so, so it's, it's it is interesting you know obviously I'm driving two rounds this year I'll be doing Atlanta and Irwindale nice um, last year doing four rounds was was amazing and uh, I just really enjoy the sport so much and the people and the fans it's just uh it's something special we've got going here. And Formula Drift, I believe, is just in a golden era. It's like we've been doing this for 20 years, but I feel like we're just getting started. I mean, if you see what happened downtown last night, oh, dude, it, was it was a vibe. It was like great. we owned Long Beach. Yeah. It was just amazing. And like everybody loved people out their windows. It was just so sick. Yeah. Let's take a look here. So, yeah, Dean Carney. Oh. Yeah, so uh, we, know, we know this driver. Uh, he knows our whole team because we've been at his shop. Uh, for the last two days, he just he opened his doors, right? A fellow Irishman yeah. uh, to James, and he opened his doors to us. So that's where the guys have been working. And uh, he's got a really dope shop with unbelievable supercars. <laughs> and he's he's creating a really neat space for, for like, a, a hyper lounge, uh, that I think he's calling it. And um, he showed me some of his plans and stuff. Really cool. And uh, he's out there ripping. Uh, you know, Dean is is an amazing driver, and you can never ever count him out. I figured you went like you know did some window shopping. I would be. I know I couldn't afford anything that's in that garage, but like you know, you just picture yourself in some. It was you know. it was cool, you know. Um, I I don't know. I I I love the way supercars look, and right. I love how they sound. Yeah. Um, I you know I, I was a proud owner of a Ford GT, and I I really enjoyed it. Um, but I I get more excited about. Our own creations than a, than a supercar these That's days. That's fair. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, you know, it's the difference between building something and buying something, right? You can buy something that's incredible, but when you, when you know that you've put the time into it, it, it feels a little bit different. Yeah. Home-cooked meal versus, you know, going out to dinner. Yeah, yeah, I mean, so. facts. facts. Yeah, exactly, right? Exactly. <laughs> I like you can control the oils and the spices yeah, and make yeah. it a little more healthy I know, I versus, know. you know, eating out with whatever they got he's in the got, back. Yeah, you, know? you just got what you got. Um, <laughs> I do want to touch on Chelsea really quick. Yeah. Um, what, what was that, like, when did that news hit your ears? Like, when did you find out? How's all that going? 
It had been a discussion, honestly, for a couple years. Okay. You know, Chelsea was just, I think, feeling a bit uninspired. Um, and, you know, he, he comes from, he just comes from a different place, right? Like, yeah. Um, I'm able to, like, find the fun in everything. And, like, even if, like, something starts to get repetitive, like, obviously we've been doing this for a very long time, like, I challenge myself with, with something else or I find something else. But Chelsea is very particular in the fact that, like, if he's not feeling like he's progressing or he's not pushing the limits of himself, uh, he does not feel fulfilled. Okay. And so it became a point, I believe, that he was kind of doing it for something else other than himself. And he is just extremely authentic to his core. And uh, I think he was um, just kind of having trouble showing up and enjoying it as much as he wanted to. And, and he felt that if, you know, he took a step back from competing, he would then be able to kind of, um, you know, just go out and drift for fun. Right. And, and you know. Um, oh, I was oh, no back in the yeah in no the back wrong. in the tires. It looked like he locked it up in time. Yeah, and that wasn't too bad. No. Um, so yeah, you know, so you know, he talked about it for a couple of years, and I, I think some perspectives and things I shared with him for probably you know, call it three years ago we first talked about. It. So I think we like extended him two years, but I think um, you know, last year, you know, it was uh, probably mid year, three quarters of the way through the year, he was just like. It's time. And I'm like, hey, man. Yeah. You know, I was fully supportive of it. I love Chelsea like a brother. We've got a, grown an amazing relationship. Um, you know, he'll be with us next weekend at the Mustang 60th in Charlotte driving some Mustangs. And so, you know, there's, there's zero, like, a breakup or yeah. any kind of situation between us. It's just he wanted to do something else, and, um, and he's doing that. And I'm really proud of him for, you know, I quit my job in 2007, right? I was in <laughs> IT. I was making good money. Um, and I left it for less, yeah. you know, and it was unknown. I left it to go as this absolute career that I could have had and, and, uh, it was guaranteed and, uh, I left it for a passion and I know what that internal conversation is, you know, and, and that's the type of place Chelsea was in and, and I admire and respect him greatly for making a tough decision. And, you know, he's, it's going to be, you know, let's say more challenging for himself for a little while, but there's one thing about Chelsea Denofa, and that dude's got zero quit in him and all the fight, and he'll get to where, you know, his heart wants him to be without without any question. And so um, he's got my full support, and uh, I'm cheering him on. Yeah, no, it's um, – yeah, it's got to be tough, but uh, it seems like it's it's working out, and, uh, I mean, it, it definitely feels a little more empty – without him here, but it looks like Ben is, has kind of slipped on those shoes pretty well. He's got a, a very similar hype energy, you know, diff, very different people, but that, that, that kind of that silliness almost. Yeah, well, you know, I, I, I've been saying, like, you know, the biggest thing with this challenge, because obviously, you know, with the, you know it is a Pennzoil title sponsored car, and Pennzoil's yeah. an amazing partner of ours, but we didn't just want it to be like, oh, we need to replace Chelsea. It's like, there's never will be another Chelsea to no. You know, Chelsea is now doing different things. Uh, would I be surprised to see him back at FD for in a year or two or three? Probably not. But, <laughs> um, you know, he's, he's just taking some space and doing his thing. And so it's like we wanted to – you make that very clear. Like this is not a Chelsea place. This is a new driver that we believe in. And, yeah. you know, similar to Chelsea, we're investing and, and helping support and grow him like we did – you know, with Chelsea uh, for the past seven years, um, you know, we just, you know, he, he's the full package as far as, you know, personality, the way he is with the fans and his style behind the wheel. Like, that's a big thing for me, yeah. um, you know, but 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 in general, he's just a great person. You know, I, I, I actually met Ben for the first time, actually sat with him in Utah. I invited him out um, to meet me and, and chat about what he had going on. I had never seen him drive prior to that moment, <laughs> but I knew he won the Pro Spec Championship. Yeah. You know, I knew he was leading that. So, like, I don't – in this game, driving is important, but that's actually a skill that if you have the basics, like, we can help progress. Yeah. What you can't create is the personality, the work ethic, the willingness, and the passion. Yeah. And uh, after meeting him, you know, for the first time, I was just like, this, this – You knew. He's yeah. the guy. No, I think it's great advice for anybody at home. You know, 
you can you can get better as a driver, but the passion's the thing that's very hard to teach. That's so. it. And this is what everyone yeah. everyone uh, gravitates towards. Yeah, you know? I agree. Well, dude, I really appreciate it, and I'm glad you're in the pits. I mean, Thanks, it's weird not seeing you drive, but uh, when we come back, we'll get into some more practice and uh, our next guest. Ryan Turk, professional drifter. In drifting, everything's a mental game. Boom! Perfect. You're not focused. You're off your game. Ryan Turk is back at it. He wants it. Performance Racing, battle tested in Formula Drift for the last four years. XPR contains Centerlook Additive Technology, Ultimate Z DDP wear protection, and superior high temp performance. Poor Purple, Royal Purple, the synthetic expert. Drifting is not just a sport, it's culture, it's in our blood. It's a fine line that you have to walk. You have to be able to adapt on the fly and be able to drive on your instinct. Tires are what we live and breathe in Formula D. We couldn't do this without them. Everybody watching around the world. Good next guest in here. I just found him, you know, yeah, just, just meandering around the pits and figured to pull him up. Uh, what's going on, Robbie? Hey, you guys dragged me all the way from Japan to come here and talk with you. I mean, dude, what's going on here? Dude, you were rocking FD <laughs> Japan announcing solo. That is the hardest thing to do. Yeah, literally, I was just talking to myself, looking at the screen. But uh, you know what? It's, it's, Judging is really hard, and I was uh, in a role where I was judging in FD Japan last year. This year, I just do the English live stream. Uh, but I mean, that's a lot of uh, weight off my shoulders because you know I just get to talk to what, talk about what's going on on the track, um, get to be a little technical, and also I get to see the live stream and you know get to answer some of the questions and comments that that are on there. Yeah, it was good. I mean, I, I do like the live stream interaction. I will say, like, ours goes by so fast. Even yes. trying to pick out a comment is so tough. But, yeah, I was, I was up during qualifying. I was sneaking in there asking some questions. <laughs> it was good. No, it was good. Um, I, need a, I need some info. I need a little bit of history. Okay. I want to know what you know about Manoa. I All right. So, to be honest, you know, I've known their family for quite a long time. And, you know, them grow. His father was a uh, you know, top contender in uh, FD Japan. He was a runner-up a few years back. And uh, ever since his son started to compete in Formula Drift Japan, uh, he stepped down to just 100% uh, help out his son. Um, and their main goal was to get here to the USA. Wow. And it looks like you know every year they've been you know cracking at it. And uh, looks like it's going by you know going as they planned because they're here this year and they're going to be doing full season. No, it's 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 great. I, I had a chance to kind of meet the family uh, yesterday, and uh, they're they're so excited. Yeah, uh, you know, it's like you so know you excited. see like car family. That's like the true car family. Yeah. Uh, but Minoa was a uh, uh, runner up from the 2023 season yep. um, in FD Japan, and he got his license through Japan to get into the Formula Drift Series here. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, 
He's a really good uh, qualified driver as well, because he was a top qualifier a few times. But, you know, obviously everybody knows 2024 at the US don't have the qualifying. Uh, but um, Tandem too, you know, uh, they were earlier talking about, they were talking about all the drivers, you know, from all over the place. And they're really excited to see these drivers, you know, from outside of the US. And also, um, they're big fans of Formula Drift USA, and they know all these drivers before. Right. They said they've been studying about, um, you know, these contenders um, through you know uh, the live stream, yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. So he's got he's got Andy Haley up front. Mm -hmm. um, I think it'd be really interesting. Both drivers have been doing well. Both drivers have had a, you know some struggles. We saw Andy uh, take a bit of a hit there earlier. Um, I think Manoa struggled with a couple of mechanical issues early, like early, early in practice. But so far, the battles have been pretty good for him. Yeah, that's going to be a really tough one for Manoa too, because Haley, even though he was doing uh, prospect. Uh, last year, um, he's been doing this for a while, and I remember he said the last time he drove on Long Beach was almost 10 years ago, yeah. because he did do uh, the Pro Series. So um, a very consistent driver that I've seen last year throughout the you know uh, Pro Spec, moving up to Pro. Uh, now it's going to be it's going to be a tough one for Minoa too. So uh, really interesting, and you know this round I'm not going to be judging. Uh, because of the circulation of the judges. So I'm just going to kick back and just enjoy the show. Yeah, I mean, hey, no no stress, right? You get to you can just kind of be a fan. and Yes, no stress. Crowd. And you know what, guys? Don't be so tough on the judges. We, <laughs> we're trying, okay? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, do, I couldn't do it. I mean, I, I hang out with you guys a lot and just try to absorb as much knowledge, especially with, you know, new judges coming in now. And there's no way. You couldn't. There's no way. There's yeah. no way to do it. And you know, this is, you know, the, the non-seated bracket, but I mean, all the drivers look like, you know, anybody could get it, anybody yeah. could take it. And, you know, within that bracket too, we also have another champion from a, a, a different series too, all yeah. the way from Europe here. So that's going to be really exciting to see too. Yeah, it's uh, it's been pretty wild. I, I will say I'm, I'm super happy that Manoa um, got on with Jerry Yang Racing. I feel like that's like the perfect fit. Like Taguchi is your, you know, kind of your partner in crime there. And then Jerry Yang obviously building some incredible cars. Um, you've got some history there as well. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, I worked with Jerry for uh, a while uh, towards the end of my career here. And um, yeah, he built some incredible cars, very beautiful. We did have some trouble at first, but then my last year was pretty much something that, you know, he wanted to build the GTR. I just wanted to, you know, kind of pay back because he helped me out a lot um, on track. So um, he got the car ready. Um, then Toguchi came. Um, Mid-season, he wanted to drive in the U.S. He was only driving in Formula J uh, Japan. Yeah. Um, did the introduction, and you know, I just you know uh, retired, started doing the judging stuff and everything. But I think their you know team is very strong, and honestly, all the guys out here in the pits too. Like, none of the teams are uh, no less than the other because anybody could. It's anybody's win uh, this weekend. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's honestly one of the biggest reasons I love practice. I mean, and especially being able to stream it now, is is there's so much that happens in practice that nobody gets to see unless you're here. Yes, and, and yeah, yeah, this is really cool because you guys started doing this win since... This is it, this is the yeah, first right? time. This yeah, right, this is the first the, time. Your so. inaugural one, man. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I um, uh, hope everybody enjoys the show. And you know, this is uh, no less than tomorrow's uh, top 32 because yeah. everybody's going for the win. And there will be uh, a top three here that you guys will be announcing at the end of today too, right? Yeah, yeah, and, and basically, you know, we kind of covered a little bit of it before, but yeah, you're wherever you line up in the seating bracket is who you're up against after. So there, yeah. there is, I mean, there's definitely, there's a huge benefit to winning because, you know, having to go up against Odie for shot. Oh yeah. Like that's, that's not, that's not fun. Yeah, and you know, <laughs> we always talked about this before too. Some of the guys that, um, you know, let's say if they get a buy run at 32, they're kind of intimidated when they get into 16 because their engine hasn't started. They're not warmed up yet because some right. of the guys that, you know, battles it out in 32 uh, makes it into 16. They already had one experience of, you know, a hard fought battle getting into top 16. So, um, you know, being able to start and uh, fill the bracket and have everybody do the battle from the beginning to the end is going to be really exciting. And I, I think it's going to be intense because even practice is, I think the drivers are like stepping it up because they know that it's going to be all tandem, so they don't have to worry about you know trying to do a single run only. They could concentrate on both uh, lead and chase for the first day. Yeah, yeah, I, I, it's it's such a huge advantage. I mean, they, say, I, you know, I've read a few comments, people back and forth about uh, some negatives that come out of it, but I really do. The more I think about it, think everything positive coming out of it outweighs any of that. Um, but I mean, we'll see. 
Yeah, but you know, we'll even see. on social media, and uh, when uh, Formula Drift decided to do this uh, style of uh, non-qualification um, brackets, I, I saw, you know, at first I was like, oh, what's going on? But yeah. just watching, you know, social media and everybody else re responding, it seemed like it was really, really positive. And like you said, yeah. you know, there are some negatives. Um, but I think everybody, it's, you know, anything you do new is going to be, uh, you're going to need some time to get, you know, used to it. And I think after the first two rounds or three rounds, everybody's going to get super used to it and always be pumped. Yeah. Um, I want to touch on FD Japan a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, so if, if you are a big drifting fan, highly recommend go watch FD Japan. Um, sometimes the time schedule a little late, but it, yes, it is. I well, feel like you, a lot of us are night owls. Anyways. Well, yeah. If you don't, if you don't watch it live, you can always go back and you know look yeah. at the archives or something to go back to see uh, Formula Drift Japan. But then, yeah, there's a lot of talent, and uh, you know some of these drivers will be you know doing great in Japan, and they're going to move up and try to come to the states. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, I, 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 love I love learning, learning about, about drivers there, there and then seeing, seeing them start, start to come, come back, back here. So, yeah, it's. Uh, yeah, it's it's pretty pretty wild to see everybody kind of grow into their own and uh, you know get these opportunities. So, I think we're gonna take a little bit of a break. We're gonna come back uh, round two thirty into the main show and uh, get into the seating sixteen. So, yeah, it'll be a little different. And thanks uh, everybody at home and everybody in the stands for sitting through some of the practice. And yeah, when we come back, it's uh, it's the main show. Yeah, make sure you tune in at two thirty. Come back for it. it's gonna be good. Yeah, Pacific, yeah, Pacific, Pacific. Time. yeah, yeah, Eastern. I mean, all if my I say it, it's going to sound like Japan time. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll catch everybody soon, and thanks for tuning into uh, the first practice stream. Thanks, guys. Do you like that now? Do you want more? Yeah, I get high pipe, yeah, I get raw. <laughs> Three, two, one, shout to the north side, shout to the south, step to the rhythm down on the dance floor. Do you like that now? Do you want more? Yeah, I get high pipe, yeah, I get raw. Shout to the north side, shout to the south, east to the west, yeah, we're going out, out. If you're in town, then give me a shout. Why are you on that? Shout to the north side, shout to the south, step to the rhythm down on the dance floor. Do you like that now? Do you want more? Yeah, I get high pipe, yeah, I get raw. Shout to the north side, shout to the south, east to the west, yeah, we're going out, out. If you're in town, then give me a shout. Why are you on that? Take it back to your house. I'm Ryan Turk, and I'm super proud to announce Rain-X's all-new wiper blade design, the Turk and SUV Heavy Duty Series. Whoa, whoa, cut! Ryan, what? it's the truck and SUV blade. It says it right there. These new blades are specifically designed for truck and SUV windshields. They're tougher and built for rugged weather. Like I said, the all-new Rain-X truck and SUV blade, engineered not to be turked in tough conditions and built for your truck or SUV. Get a pair today, only at AutoZone. I mean, I still like the idea of a Turk and SUV blade. Turn your passion into a career at the University of Northwestern Ohio. From high performance to automotive, diesel, and everything in between, you'll find a degree that will get you a job. Students that go through our programs have fantastic experiences and they come out getting good job placements. 70% hands-on, no out-of-state tuition, and accredited degrees in trades that are in high demand all across the country. 10 out of 10. If you even think this is the right place for you, you better just go. Learn more about your future at unoh.edu. This season, Toyota Racing is looking for jaw droppers. Break for Martin Shurex right there, the fastest lap of the day. Iron stomachs that can stand the pressure. And quick draw thumbs that leave their own smoke trail. So hold on tight and strap yourself in. This season, we want you. Join us at Toyota Racing. T-Radio, experience ultra-high performance.
We've been holding power you make for 30 years. But here's the real question. How much torque are you making? Because every single ACT clutch is rated by the torque produced at the crank. That's all your clutch cares about. Your power. Your performance. Your success. Unrivaled precision, power, and durability. Visit advancedclutch.com today. 30 years of precision engineering and performance excellence. Because every revolution starts at the crank.